much necessary for success by providing a coherent, rigorous, safe and nurturing, culturally responsive and inclusive learning community. I would like to call the special Board of Education meeting March 5th to order. Would you all please join me in a moment of silence.
has discussed the potential of closing schools at eight regular board meetings. Community members, parents, and staff have had ongoing opportunities for input on the boundary change process. This included a community kickoff on September 28th, an online survey, school site council meetings, and regular board of education meetings. The superintendent's focus group met on October 20th, November 15th, December 15th, and January 5th to discuss the boundary process and to review proposals from RSP and associates. The district host hosted public forums on January 11th, January 12th, January 18th, and January 19th at schools in each quadrant of the community. The superintendent's focus group met again on January 26th to discuss input from the public forums and to review proposal revisions. The board reviewed the first draft of the boundary proposal at a BOE Committee of the Whole on February 6th. The board had its first review of the superintendent's final boundary proposal on February 13th. At that meeting, the board approved scheduling a public hearing for tonight and directed staff to publish a notice to comply with the requirements of KSA 72-8213B school buildings closing procedure. The Wichita Eagle published a notice that is in Appendix 1 on February 16th and February 23rd. The board had its second review of the superintendent's final boundary proposal on February 27th. This item will provide a public hearing regarding proposed school closings. The board will then have an opportunity to discuss and or take appropriate action on, one, the proposed closing of school buildings, two, the superintendent's final boundary proposal, and three, grandfather. <coughs> Under the public hearing, we had 12 persons registered to speak before noon today, and those are listed in tonight's agenda. And tonight before the meeting, we had step we have five more individuals registered for a total of 17 speakers. Before I call on our first speaker, I will remind you that you are restricted to three minutes. If there is a point that you need to make, I encourage you to do that right away. Uh, at the end of three minutes, I will ask that you stop talking. Now, We've kind of gone through this, and I know there are some that feel upset that they don't get to make their points. So I'm encouraging you, please try to make your points within the three minutes. This is not an opportunity for you to be rude or to talk uh, regarding staff. If you do that, I will interrupt you. With that being said, I'd like to call on our first speaker, Michelle Sandin. Michelle Sandon, the last name is spelled S-A-I-N-D-O-N. Are you present? We will go on to our next speaker, Charity Chapman. And while uh, Ms. Chapman is coming to the podium. I'd like to say to those audience, we are well aware you're in support of them, so it's not necessary to stand. Please take your seat. I'd like to start with a quote from Mark Twain. In religion and politics, people's beliefs and convictions are in almost every case gotten at second hand and without examination from authorities who have not themselves examined the questions at issue, but have taken them at second hand from other non-examiners, whose opinions about them were not worth a brass farthing. As a parent, I had all four of my children's elementary education planned out, starting with my fifth grader all the way down to my three-year-old. I did my homework. I researched and visited schools and chose, in my opinion, the absolute best learning environment for them. Now that's being taken away from us. We're told we have choices, even first dibs at a big, bright, shiny new school. If that's what I wanted, I would have chosen that a long time ago. Dare I choose another small family-like school in 259 for my children to attend? I think not. It's been stated time and again that this is just the first round of closings, and clearly small schools are being targeted. 
So rather than put my children in your <coughs> new state-of-the-art facility or any other huge factory of a school where they will be lost in the massive number of students, I choose to leave 259. It's not a choice I wanted to make. It's a choice you're forcing me into. You're pushing me out the door. <coughs> Closing these schools and predicting to close more in the near future absolutely kills all trust and stability in 259. <coughs> choice is fair as next week, yet the name doesn't seem to fit. At the last meeting, a speaker from outside the district was questioned before they were allowed to speak. You aren't from here? You don't have children that attend 259? Like it shouldn't and didn't affect him. Ms. Chapman, would you please stay with us? Can you, can you stop my time, please? Uh, we'll make sure that you get adequate time. We're aware of what happened in the past meeting. I do encourage you if there are points you want to I had make. a point to it. Well, again, I, I would ask you, please. Let her speak. Yeah. I will clear the room if there is continued outburst. Please understand that. Uh, security, we do have a gentleman that may need your attention. Please be aware of it. There will be no outburst from the audience. I hope you understand that. It will not be tolerated. Now, I am asking you to stay focused on your points. I want you to be able to say those things. We're aware of what transpired, so I okay. don't want you to use your time needlessly. Okay. I'm not alone in feeling pushed out 259's door. This isn't just a handful of people who will be leaving the district. It is many, many more than you realize or would like to admit. So other districts absolutely do have a stake in this. If you truly believe in shared fat sacrifice, then do it. Let it be shared. You do your part by standing up for what is right and best for children. Vote no to closing schools, and let us do our part by forming a committee to keep schools open, looking at each school in 259's budget individually and trimming it accordingly. A 10% cut across the board was mentioned during last week's meeting. If you let us, I absolutely know we could trim each school's budget by 10%, if not a little more. However, the schools shouldn't be the only ones trimming their budget. 259 as a whole needs to be more accountable on its spending and tighten the belt. Respect was preached at the last meeting. Yet, do you show us the same respect you expect us to show you? It's a two-way street. You are publicly elected officials, elected by the public and for the public, to act on our behalf. We feel we have not been truly listened to. You allow us to speak at these meetings, but do you truly listen? I'm sorry. You have, we did add on your additional seconds. You're showing that she has five more? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We'll give you ten more seconds. Sometimes your body language and keen eye on the time suggest otherwise. Hurt or not, we will not stop. 259 has a zero tolerance on bullying. Everyone in this room knows who the real bully is. warning. There are no applauses. There are no outbursts. Each speaker has the opportunity to speak. And if you feel you cannot contain yourself, you can voluntarily remove yourself from the room or I will ask security to do so. That's my final time warning you. Our next speaker